been admitted by Speaker Alban Babing on Thursday, October 27, the next 14 days, barring any last-minute changes, would see the House carry through the provision under Order 107B of the Parliament's Standing Orders, which provide as follows. Quote, the motion shall be debated in Parliament within 14 days of its receipt by Mr. Speaker and shall be supported by the votes in secret ballot of not less than two-thirds of all members of Parliament, unquote. In doing so, the law provides that the under fire minister be given a fair hearing in accordance with Order 107C, which reads, quote, during the proceedings on the motion, the minister shall be entitled to be heard in his defense, unquote. Where a vote of censure is passed, the president may, unless the minister resigns, revoke the appointment. This may not come as easy as it appears due to the peculiar dynamics of the 8th Parliament, a hung parliament with 137 MPs, a peace and an independent MP who sits with the MPP, making a majority group of 138 MPs. To be able to push through the motion of censure, to thirds of all the MPs, a minimum of 183 MPs will have to vote in support of the motion. If the sides must depend on the strengths of their own numbers, the NDC can only count on the support of 136 MPs, less the Asin North MP James J. Quason, who is currently standing trial and has been restrained from Parliament. If they must succeed at this motion, they need to be able to court the support of at least 47 more MPP MPs to vote in favor of the motion. If only the 80 disgruntled MPs will express their displeasure in the secret ballot, the easier it gets for the NDC and the quicker Ken Ofriata is shown the exit. It's purely a numbers game, and every single vote would count in determining the fate of Ken Ofuriata. If the motion fails to move the minister out, the only option is to wait to the end of the IMF negotiations, the passage of the 2023 budget, and the appropriation bills before the president makes a decision on him, if he ever does.